What's up guys, welcome back to your fifth video tutorial on hacking with SQL injection. In this video we're going to take a break from the union statement for a little bit, which is what we've been looking at for I believe the past two tutorials, and we're going to go back to taking a look at some of the other methods a hacker can use to gain information about your database layout and configuration. Uh, up until this point in the series, we've kind of been working under the assumption that the hacker already knows about the database layout, which would be the table names, the database names, and the column names. But usually, in a real-world hacking situation, this isn't the case, because the hacker will be going into a kind of unknown database where they won't know anything about the database names, they won't know about the table names or the field names, which is obviously an important part of building uh, SQL queries that will actually run. So in this video, we're going to start taking a look at some of the methods a hacker can use through SQL injection to gain information about the database layout. So back over in our Find a User page, we're going to start taking a look at the easiest method a hacker can use to find the column names or the field names in a particular table. Uh, this method is generally called an intelligent brute forcing method, which pretty much means the hacker is going to be guessing the names of the columns in the table one by one and uh, then checking using SQL injection whether or not those guesses are actually correct. Uh, the difference between just brute forcing and intelligent brute forcing though is that the hacker isn't just going to be typing in any kind of gibberish as a column name and seeing whether or not that's correct. They're going to take a look at the web page that they're actually going to be uh, injecting into, which in this case is called find a user, and they're going to maybe try entering some data that actually works, like test one with no injection after it, and seeing what's being output. Uh, in this case, a username is being output, and an email address is being output. So we can safely assume that somewhere inside a users or accounts or login table, there is going to be a username field, and there's going to be an email field. But how exactly do we test what the field names are? Well, that's where a simple form of SQL injection comes in, uh, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. Uh, we just enter our dummy data, which I'm just going to use X like I usually do, and we're going to close data encapsulation, so anything following that is going to be parsed as SQL and not a string. And we're going to use the following injection code. We're going to say AND, and then we're going to use the column name that we're going to be testing uh, whether or not it, it exists. So say I want to test whether the username column exists. I could try AND name is null. And that's the entire uh, SQL injection to check whether or not there is a column in here called name. So if we copy this and paste it in, we can demonstrate how this works. Uh, if we press submit, uh, we've gotten an error saying unknown column name in where clause. So we know the usernames aren't being stored in a field called name. And from that, we can maybe try something a little different. Why don't we try actually putting in and username is null. Username is null and submitting that. And this time we didn't get an error. The injection code that we input to the form ran perfectly fine without errors, which means that the field username does exist in this table. Okay, so now that you guys know the method that's used to intelligently brute force column names from a table, uh, we can start taking a look at what's actually going on in the background with this query that we just executed right here. Uh, we can see that at the start of the query, we simply entered our dummy data and closed data encapsulation. And following that, we have an AND username is null, uh, which is telling the query to only return true if the username column for this particular uh, record is null, meaning it's empty. Uh, as a hacker, though, we don't really care whether or not the username is empty or not. Uh, we're mostly just using this code to see whether or not the database will trigger an error, or fail, or just do something strange in regards to the web page that's returned to us. For example, if we try entering some random gibberish here as a column name, 
and submitting this to the server as our SQL injection, we get the error message unknown column as defa in where clause. Now this is important because the database is pretty much telling us straight up how hey, the column as defa doesn't exist. So why don't you, you know, try something different? So if we go back and change this to something that actually would make sense in a user's table, such as email, and submit that, you can see that this time we didn't get an error. So the database has pretty much told us outright, hey, the column as defa doesn't exist, but the table column email does exist. And we can keep trying this method over and over again until we finally have the entire uh, database table mapped out. So that's all we're going to go through today, guys. Uh, that's a pretty simple method that's generally fairly effective in gathering the column names being returned from a database query, such as the one in our find a user page right here. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. It's always good hearing feedback from you guys, and you know, if you need any help with this kind of stuff, feel free to send me a message on my YouTube channel, or get in touch via comment, or whatever, man. But uh, that's all we're going to go through today, and I'll see you guys in the next video.